so this is what's cool about being a Yankee fan, in my opinion. I want to share this with you. Let me know what your thoughts are. What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. Hope you're all doing well. So as a Yankee fan, collectively, you know, we have our ups and downs together. We know this, right? And there's a handful of fans that are frustrated and think the Yankees haven't done anything, which is totally, total malarkey, but they have that opinion, right? And and there's other Yankee fans who think a little bit differently, who think the Yankees have had a pretty solid offseason, like myself. And I've given dozens of reasons why, and I report on all the stuff that they do on a regular basis. So it's up to people to decide what they believe, and that's totally fine. So, and like I said, I'll say this now, opinions are always welcome, whether you agree with me or disagree. The second you become a dick in the comments, you get blocked, the account gets deleted, period. I don't care who you are, not even a little bit. So you become disrespectful to myself or other people else, other, other people on the channel, you're gone. That's it. There's no need to be that way, okay? So with that said, this man right here, Jan Carlos Stanton, yes, that's him. The Hulk, right, of the Yankees. Aaron Judge is just as big, but he doesn't look like that, okay? This is Goliath, right? And so, and again, he's had his share of, of ups and downs here. He's, he was traded here and waived his no trade clause to come here. He was a big bopper, big performer when he came here, and then he started, you know, have a little bit more injury bug happening on a regular basis. And the majority of his injuries have been lower body injuries, unfortunately, which has affected his product productivity. But when he's on the field, when he's healthy, you know, the 162 game average for him is about 42 home runs and 100 RBIs. So you're looking at Hall of Fame type numbers, but you got to keep him on the field, and it hasn't been. It's been harder to do that recently, right? So he's made some modifications to his physique and his health this offseason. And he's he looks a heck of a lot different right now. He looks a lot leaner. And he looks fitter and more agile and healthy. And I saw some footage of him recently. It looks great. Which you know, and again, collectively it looks like a lot of the other Yankees are on the same page too, because I've said that Carlos Rodon is he's already in Tampa. So is Nestor Cortez. He's already in Tampa. They are there. They're fit. They're in shape. They look healthy. Anthony Rizzo's gotten a clean bill of health from his doctors, not the Yankees doctors, his actual doctors, okay? DJ LeMayu's got a clean bill of health too. So a lot of guys are coming back healthy, and yes, the Yankees are going to be partly reliant on bounce back season from some players. There's no denying that, but they're also going to be relying on productivity from the new players that they brought in, a la Juan Soto, a la uh, Trent Grisham, a la... Alex Verdugo, whether it be contact bats from the lefty side or elite defense in the outfield or whatever it may be. So just like other teams are reliant on all the players that they bring in via trade or free agency too. It's no different. Okay. But I want to give Giancarlo Stanton, Giancarlo Stanton a lot of credit because he came in here and he took the criticism. And then, you know, generally with the Yankee fans, you come here in a trade, you don't perform, you get booed. The Yankee fans booed their own homegrown players too. They just come to the territory. So it is what it is. But I want to give him credit, too, because he also credited – remember this guy, Isaiah Kanafalefa, who's now with the Toronto Blue Jays? He credited Isaiah Kanafalefa for inspiring him in his journey to transform his body and become more healthy and productive for the team. Why? Well, Isaiah Kanafalefa also came in here via trade that people didn't want, and he played out of position his first year. But he found his own way here, and he got better in the second year here. But he also, just like Giancarlo Stanton, took the criticism, took the heat every single day. And they both answered questions like a damn pro. And they got to give him credit for that. Okay, people might, might, want, might not want to, but I'm giving him credit for that. And I'm crediting <clears throat> Goliath for pointing out David for being his inspiration. It just, it generally doesn't happen. It's usually a lot of ego involved in this stuff. And especially people who talk about these people. And report on these people. There's a lot of ego there, too. And it doesn't need to be. So, Giancarlo Stanton crediting Isaiah kind of Falefa, again, because he, he was in a similar boat. Traded here. Did perform in the beginning. Performed tech a lot better, but he played out of position. <clears throat> found his way here and acted like a damn pro. They were bo they're both great teammates. Giancarlo Stanton is still a great teammate. He's also a leader of this team. 
And but he actually he credited IKF for inspiring him, and I want to give him his props due for that. His due props for that. And again, credit to IKF too for doing what you did here. Thank you for playing, playing, you know, being a good Yankee. And even though you played in a position your your whole entire first year, <clears throat> and they had trouble finding a, a you know, a, a justifiable position for you. I get that. You know, and, and it's unfortunate because the depth that the Yankees had was suspect. Now they've got a heck of a lot better depth. You wouldn't have a place here right now, unfortunately. So so that's the credit to the, the Yankees and, and the people who brought these new players in. Okay. And credit and credit to you for getting a new gig with the Blue Jays, too. I hope you play well there. I hope you don't punish the Yankees too much. As in the Blue Jays, because people who generally get traded from the Yankees tend to punish the Yankees when they leave, when they play the Yankees. So I hope that's not the case with you. But this is fantastic. This really is fantastic. So, and again, it's nice to see teammates crediting their other teammates or even ex-teammates for this type of stuff. I never would have thought that Stanton would have credited IKF for inspiring him to do this transformation, but he did. And I hope that Stanton comes back healthy and productive because we need him in the lineup. And maybe he'll, if he gets an opportunity to play on the field on occasion, we need him in the field too. We need some versatility as well. Okay. Because again, he can rotate as a backup first baseman, as a DH, as an outfielder. We give some of the outfielders we have DH days or off days when they need it. We need that extra depth. We need that extra healthy depth. So, but shout out to Giancarlo Stanton for, 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 you know, crediting IKF for that, man. That's that's an adult thing to do. Respect, man. Absolute respect. So, by the way, it's a lot more Yankee stuff coming. I, I'm very confident they're going to be making a couple of moves. And it's still, the roster is still not a 40, so they have to. So, make sure that you're sub to this channel so you don't miss out on any of the moves the Yankees make. Big, small, it doesn't matter. Not every move needs to be big. Not every move needs to be an expensive player. Okay? Especially now, when they're the only team over the Cohen threshold. The only team. Okay? So everything has to be calculated differently, meaning everything. You know, if they, they give Blake Snell thirty million dollars a year, that becomes sixty million. If they give someone else like Matt Chapman twenty million, that becomes forty million. For as long as they're over the Cohen threshold, everything is taxed dollar for dollar. That's basic math, but that also has to be factored in. And they're the only team in that boat right now. So that's important to keep this in mind, which is why I point it out on a regular basis because so many people tend to either forget that or ignore that. And they say, they're the Yankees. They're the most valuable. I understand that. That doesn't mean they're sitting on mountains of profits. And it doesn't mean massive overpay. Because the other fact is, the Yankees, you know, they've been criticized for decades now for buying championships, for overpaying free agents, right? And now they're being criticized for not overpaying free agents who want to be overpaid, who haven't proved they're justifying uh, they're being worthy of an overpay. How do I know? Well, no one else is overpaying for them. Okay. So the Yankees are, you know, putting forth offers that are fair value in their opinion, whatever that might be. And again, excuse the fire engines. The, the market right now dictates an overpay for a lot of players. And that's just the way the free agency goes, especially right now. And if you don't subscribe to that overpay, then you're considered lowballing them or being cheap, right? This is what they this is the bet the boat that the Yankees are in. They're being criticized for not overpaying. So they're damned if they do if they're damned if they don't. So and credit to certain fans for pointing this out, right? In the comments. So I uh, it's it's nice to have people that actually acknowledge this stuff because it's true. So that's what I have for you right now as, as it pertains to the Yankees. So I expect them to make more moves. I expect them to more likely make likely uh, be on the trade market now as opposed to free agency. But if they do bring in whoever they bring in via free agency, I expect them to offload someone and offset some of their contract. So, and yes, it's not my money. It's no one else's money. But I do, I am respect, respectful of the situation that they're in. Okay? So, but that's me. I can't speak for everybody else. Now, in other news, the Kansas City Royals just signed versatile infielder, outfielder Adam Frazier to a one-year deal. This is uh, reported by John Heyman, corroborated by MLBTradeRumors.com. They've been making some sneaky good moves as well. They try in their efforts to be more competitive in the in the AL Central. So look out for the Royals. It's teams like this that make these non-sexy moves that add up collectively. 
just like the Mets. I got to give them credit. They haven't been making these big expensive moves like they made last year that clearly did not work. But they're making these incremental moves that are likely going to add up more than the big moves that <laughs> did last year. So it's teams like that that make these incremental moves that pay off. That pieces, role players, right? addressing actual needs. Okay, And the Mets are direct evidence that signing the big-name players in the big-name contracts doesn't guarantee success. Okay, Just like the Dodgers. They signed all these expensive players, durable players, yeah, star players and so on, but they haven't won a World Series yet, and no one's going to hand it to them. So that's what I got for you right now. Have a great day. Peace and love to all of you. If anything else comes out, you know you're going to get it here. Talk to you next time.